there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of crafts for you today so what are we waiting for let's get started did I check my hood is it like pretty back there I forgot to check it see if I can see it in the <laughs> okay it looks all right <laughs> see it in reflection of my camera <laughs> Today we'll be working on farmhouse style spring home decor crafts, so let's get started with project number one. For this project, I've got a free printable for you. The link will be in my description box to my blog. It's a pretty easy pattern. It's just two circles, a five inch and a four inch, and then a petal shape. The five inch circle and the four inch circle, you'll cut one of your fabric and the petal, you'll cut 10. You do have the option of adding batting as well. You could cut one for each circle and then 10 for the batting or you could double the batting like i'm going to do and you could double the fabric like i'm going to do but again the link will be in my blog now for fabric i'm using this quilted look fabric already done i got it from joanne fabrics i'll have a link down below for you these two fabrics are kind of an oatmeal shade it's called from jubileefabrics.com i wanted to go real neutral palette for this but you could go really pretty bright spring colors if you want this is a really dark muslin i got a long time going like this extra scrap of just corduroy fabric that i had from my supply and this is the batting i'm using you can just get it at walmart by the yard or in a bag you can see it's really thin so i'm gonna cut two so my main pillow fabric is 18 by 18 you'll cut two of that for whatever you want and then five of each petal design now you could do all one color if you do all one color obviously you want 10 you could do three colors four colors 10 colors you know you just want 10 petals total and as you can see here i cut two batting for each petal and then my fabric was a little thin so i went ahead and cut two of each of the fabric as well just to give it a really nice kind of thick look when i'm done but it really is one of each my five inch circle again i cut two of this muslin material two of the batting and then for the smaller four inch circle i cut two of the batting and just one of this fabric because it's kind of a thick corduroy i actually got that at walmart where they always have the rolls of fabric like two yards two dollars thing for like a long time ago i'm also going to use some of this thick batting i got at joann's it's a one inch thick batting i got it in store and then of course gluers you can use a fabri glue or a hot glue gun and of course sewers you can opt to use a sewing machine if you'd like <laughs> all right so to get started i'm going to take my two pillow pieces I'm going to find just fold them in half and find the center so I can place my first petal and I'm going to go you can do however you want it you know me I like to measure and make things exact I'm going to go about one and a half inch from the edge to try and keep my center you know where my flower is going to go and I'm going to alternate colors okay and I'm going to do like the stripe will kind of go on the bottom and as I alternate colors you can see I'm overlapping my petals you could spread them out more if you want um, you could even, if you take the pattern and you wanted smaller petals, you could reduce your pattern size down, however you would like to do it. But as you can see, see my petals because of the two pieces of batting, the couple pieces of material, they look really thick and quilted like the fabric for the main pillow. And that was what I wanted. Again, just kind of keeping it so I can measure and find the center. But now in the center of the fabric, I have cut a piece of that batting, that one inch batting. I'm going to show you what we're going to do here to fit the center. And I'm going to use the four inch circle size. I'm going to place that pattern first in the center and then kind of move my petals out around it. So that'll help me to center the flower as well. Is that understandable? Did I say it really weird? Use the four inch circle in the center to help you find the center of your flower and center your flower on your pillow backing. How about that? Okay. Now, if you're a gluer, you could certainly just start gluing all your petals down, but I want to give you an option here. The plaid petals that we lay on top of the two stripe petals, that little area between the two stripe petals, if you just glue that down, that plaid petal is going to kind of sink down to that bottom fabric so I'm going to use some of this thicker batting here you could use if you use the thinner batting under your petals you could use that why I didn't use that I don't know but my brain was on using this kind of polyester batting but what I'm going to do is just kind of freehand cut like a triangular shape to fit in that little space between the two striped petals 
it's a little bit thick here, so I'm just going to kind of pull it apart, lay it down there, and then lay my, pa my petal right on top. And I'm going to leave the ends of my petals kind of free and hanging. Here's where I'm showing you if you use the batting, this thinner batting, I would at least cut two pieces to fill that space. Now, this is just optional if you want, okay? But I think it'll look better if that plaid petal lays level against the striped petals underneath. Now, it's the same thing for the center. I'm going to add a piece of this batting under the center. You could use the other thin batting if you want. But if you don't, see when I lay this circle in there, see how you can kind of see how it indents because it, it sinks down to the main pillow. So if you put a little batting underneath, it makes it lay level against the other petals. Now, another option for you, if you're going to start gluing these down, see how the petals are all nice and flat here. If you want to make a little bit more of a 3D look, take your glue and at the short end of that petal, just go down about an inch and draw a line of glue and then fold your petal in half there. Okay, you're just going to fold it in half. Short end, a line of glue about an inch down, fold it in half, let your glue set up. And then once it's done, spread those other two out and then you can take and glue that down. Add glue around those edges that you fold out and it's going to give you like that little bubble in the center and if you do that all the way around on all the petals or at least the top petals it's going to give you a little bit more of a 3d look and sewers we can do this as well now you have the option like i said to glue the petals all the way flat or like i'm going to do as i do my petals i'm going to glue about three quarters of the petal and leave the tips hanging loose just to give it a little bit of movement okay it's just optional so you have lots of options in creating this you can make a real easy glue the whole thing down or you can add a little bit of batting you can add a little bit of a 3d look now once your petals are down you're going to glue your larger circle to the center glue your smaller circle on top and you're ready to go okay now for sewers i'm going to do my little 3D look in the middle, pinch it, sew around each of the petals separately, and then I'm going to sew around the larger circle. And then, of course, I'm going to leave that all these edges open and raw. I'm going to sew the smaller circle around the perimeter, and then I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue and glue everything down. You could sew your petals to the pillow if you want, if you're an experienced sewer and want to do that, but I'm going to just sew everything individually and then glue it down. Now, let's work on our petal. To make our little thing, what we're going to do is fold our petal in half with the fabric out, and then you're going to just sew down near that bottom edge the same direction as the fold of your fabric, about an inch line, okay? And I'll show you here in just a second. See that inch line is the same direction as the fold on the fabric, all right? And then you're going to open that up just like this, and then you're just going to sew across it. It's what I'm going to do, and I'm using a size 14 needle. I'm just sewing right across that fold. It doesn't matter if the fold folds over or anything like that. It's going to get covered up by that big circle, and then I'm going to continue along all the way around the outer edge of the petal just to, you know, give it that fun sewing look. It's all those fabrics and everything are going to kind of pop up because we're sewing against two layers of batting and that kind of thing, and that's the look I'm looking for. Just kind of that fun country charm look and now of course here I am I'm sewing the big uh, five inch diameter circle I'm about a half inch seam allowance here just sewing around that and then we'll move on to the smaller four inch circle and we'll do the same thing just wanted to show you one petal and then show each you know circle ensemble so to speak and then we'll move on putting our pillow together yeah, I really wished I could find more of this corduroy fabric. It was just awesome. I think there was a couple bundles there. It was like three or four years ago. I'm, I only bought one and I've never found it since. Anyway, here's what my petal looks like because you wanted to know that. See where I kind of sewed it across, down and around. I've got all my edges out. You can see here on the back side better what that looks like with that little sewing in the center. So let's start assembling. The first thing I'm going to actually do here is put my circle in the center. And I'm actually going about seven inches top to bottom, side to side to find the actual center of my 18 by 18 inch pillow. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that little piece of foam i'm calling it foam but it's like a polyester batting gluing that down or if you're using the regular batting you can glue that down and then i'm going to lay my petals down and that should still give me about a one and a half inch from around that outer perimeter of the main pillow to glue my petals down it should still give me that you know 
nice one and a half where we first started and I said I'm coming one and a half inch down to start my pedal. It should still work all perfectly wonderful. Now I glued down that first pedal and I left about the top quarter of it unglued like I said I was going to do. And then I'm going to glue down my little triangular piece of batting, lay my plaid fabric on top just so it's in its place as I come to glue down my other striped fabric. I'm going to get the pretty much the striped fabrics into place first. The spacing, I mean, I didn't really need to lay that on top because the spacing of that foam does it for me, but I needed the visual. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue down the plaid petal on top of both of those stripe petals. We'll do one more. We're going to glue down our little spacer here. There we go. I'm getting smart now. <laughs> didn't, didn't leave the petal there. And then we're going to glue down the stripe petal. Again, just like three quarters of it. And then we're going to glue down our plaid petal on top, three quarters of it, again, leaving the end down. And you could glue the whole petal down if you want. It's optional, but I thought leaving those pointed edges of the petals open would give it lots of fun. And I'm going to continue that all the way around. As you can see here by magic, it's all the way done. All right. I've got my foam in the center or my batting. It's already glued down, so I'm going to glue down my 5-inch circle on top of that. And see, it'll cover all those raw edges and everything where we did the little pleat in, you know, at the end of our petals and stuff like that. Pleat, why didn't I use that word earlier? <laughs> then I'm going to glue down my smaller 4-inch circle on top, and I'm going to kind of push down a little bit more harder where I sewed there so it allows the edges of that circle to kind of pop up. I'll do it on both circles. Now, if you're a gluer, it's time to do our pillow and get it together. You're going to glue right near the edges of both fabrics fabrics and you're going to glue about three and three quarters away the around leaving about a hand width opening for stuffing if you're a sewer you're going to do the same thing you can see here where I've sewn all the way around leaving about three quarter of it open about a hand width open and now you're going to start to stuff your pillow and then once you stuff it to the desired thickness that you want if you're a gluer you're going to glue that opening closed if you're a sewer you're going to sew that opening closed and then that makes this project complete Let's move on to project number two. For this project, we're using some Dollar Tree supplies. I have six of these thick wood hearts that we're going to be using. And then one of these thick wood circles. And then I have one wood slice here, but later you're going to need two. And I think some Dollar Trees have wood slices, but I'm using two wood slices. But like I said, later I end up showing you on camera. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of arrange these hearts into like a flower shape. So you're probably going to, or saw at the beginning, we've got a flower theme going on. We're going to work with the holes that are already in these. We don't need to fill them. We don't need to do anything like that because it's going to just give us more personality to our rustic flower that we're going for. Right now, I'm just, you know, I placed the circle in the center of the hearts and I'm marking it off because at this point I was going to use wood glue and I'm marking it so I knew where not to paint on the hearts. I'm using Waverly Wax mixed with water and I'll bring in Debbie's Design Diary DIY Chalk Paint and White Swan and I'm using the antique wax mixed with water and of course, like I said, leaving that end open because I was initially going to use wood glue because what I want to do is I want it obviously to 
look like a stain. And then when we paint the white swan chalk paint on top and then I distress it, it's going to give us that kind of look of the stain around the edges of the paint, which is what I'm going for. Off camera, I will go ahead and do another wood slice. Remember, we need two wood slices because what I want is another wood slice for the back to finish the back off. All right, once this dries, now I'm coming in. I took that white swan chalk paint and I mixed it with water to make it kind of like a wash. All right, I didn't want it full strength. I do do two coats of this white wash, but I didn't want it full strength just so that it's easier to uh, you know, get it off when I'm sanding. I want it to look a little more distressed. I want some of that brown to kind of peep through the white and, you know, that kind of thing. But I really like how this turns out. It's really simple. It's really easy. I love that I left the holes in the hearts, the wood slice. So, you know, we don't have to sit and fill them and sand off the wood filler and all that kind of stuff. Why bother with that? Let's make it work for us, right? A little less work, but it's still cute. I'm game. So here I am kind of sanding everything, distressing all of it. I still haven't pulled out that other wood slice yet. I honestly didn't even think about it till near the end. And I'm like, I want to make the backside pretty. And I don't want people to see the backside where the hearts come together because it doesn't look nice. So then later is where I'll bring that other wood slice in. Once this is done, we're going to go ahead. You're going to see my second wood slice. I didn't stain this side because it doesn't matter anyway. You're not going to see it. The back side is stained in distress. And I'm laying my hearts into position here. Just kind of right, you know, even in the center of that wood slice. I'm starting out with Beacon Quick Grip Glue here. I've got just a tiny bit left in my tube. And I'm just gluing the bottom, you know, part of the heart there and then laying it on that wood slice, and then I'll lay something heavy on top. This Beacon Quick Grip Glue takes about 10 minutes to set, 24 hours to fully cure, but I love it. It just works wonderful. But then I run out of this glue, and so I, then I use a different Beacon Glue, and it works just as wonderful. Before I glue the top portion on, I took some kind of medium brown paint here mixed with water, and I'm dipping my fan brush into it. I wipe the excess off, then I tap my fan brush to add some little splatters on the heart to give it a little bit more of a distress. Not too much, just a tiny, it's subtle you know, splattered onto the hearts, and then I'll splatter it onto the center pieces as well. I love doing this. It just adds a little something to it. I don't know, and it's easy to do. So my quick grip glue ran out, and now I'm using PowerTac Beacon Glue, industrial grade, works wonderful. I ordered it when I ordered like my 12 bottles of Beacon adhesive. I ordered it from the Beacon website, um, and it worked just as good because I didn't really see a difference. Again, takes 10 minutes to set up. 24 hours to cure. Once I've got the glue on the heart, so I'm going to add the thicker wood piece here. Now, I thought it looked funny with two uh, holes in our wood pieces showing, so I chose a wood slice that covered the whole of the thicker wood piece. Once I place that wood slice on, that makes this project complete. We'll take a look at the final results at the end of our next project. With that said, let's move on to project number three. So for this wood flower, I'm using these hearts that are on dowels. You're only going to need five of them. I thought it'd be fun for a flower theme today for spring. I have this wood circle in my supply. No holes. You notice these have no holes in them. We're not worried about that. But And I also have this thin wood circle that came from somewhere. I don't know. So I'm going to use that for the backing, right? Like we did on the other one. But like Dollar Tree does have these coasters. It's about the same thickness. It does have a hole. You might want to cover it. I don't know. Or you could use the same thick wood piece to use from, you know, our last flower. Either thing will work or wood slice front and back, however you want to do it. First thing I want to do is just pull these dowels out of all of the flowers. I could just cut them off and leave the dowels in there, but it doesn't matter because we're covering the back anyway, so you're not going to see the holes in there. I'm using Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint only. I'm not doing any kind of like Waverly Antique, uh, you know, wax mixed with water stain or anything like that. The last flower I wanted more rustic, right? More kind of natural wood. But this one I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a whimsical look to it, but still be farmhouse. Maybe you might say it's a little bit shabby. I don't know, but Either way, I just want to do full paint on this. I do two coats, front and back of everything, and then once I'm done painting it, I wasn't going to sand it at all, but then I decided I've got to have some distressing to it. So off camera, once I'm, you know, the 
both coats of paint are dry and that I go ahead and distress it. I don't show you it because I showed you that in the first wood flower and well, you know how to do it, right? So here everything is all distressed and ready to go. I've got my back piece done. I've got my front piece done. Now what I'm going to do is I want to do a little shading and I'm going to use just some ink. All right, this is just a pigment ink. I believe I got this at Studio G, Michael's, Joann's. Years ago, I have tons of ink, and I'm just holding the ink pack against ink pad against the edge of the uh, wood heart there just on one side. I'm going to do the same side on all of the wood hearts. And then once I ink it, I go in and just do a little spray with water, spritz with water. And then I use like a little baby wipe to wipe it off. And I do this several times till I get the look that I want. Now, yes, if you're a good painter with shading and you want to, you know, do like paint mixed with water and shade it that way you can do it that way but you know I'm a scrapbooker even though I did toll painting and stuff in the past it's been years so I'm not like practiced up on doing shading with painting and so I feel more comfortable just using ink pads so that's what I'm going with so I just ink along the edges spritz it with some water here wipe it with the baby wipe do several coats one side of the heart only and then I lay the circle in the center of that so I can kind of see how much more shading I might need on the hearts and then I do the same and I move to the wood circle in the center and do that same process now in the center I do add a little bit of like a brown ink and stuff like that as well just to give it a little bit more of a look as you can see there I made it a little bit darker in the center of that wood circle that little darker pink circle there just to make it shine out a little bit more to make it look like it's the center of the stamen of a wood flower that kind of thing and so now I'm taking just some dark paint here. I'm doing three little dots just to give it a little something. And then as you saw, I've got three fan brushes here. And I'm going to use a pink paint mixed with water. I like to water it down. A white and a black. I'm starting in with the pink. And I'm splattering on the white areas only. And then I'm coming in with black. And I'm adding a little bit more on the pink side, all right, just to kind of allow that pink to show up. And you can see it's just barely any, but all of the colors together are going to be really nice. And I'm doing the center as well, of course. And then I come in with a little bit of white, and I do the same thing all over the whole piece. But I do a little bit more white here, really heavy in that pink circle on our middle wood piece, on our stamen area, right, just so it really brings that darker pink circle out and really makes it look like the center of the flower. And now I'm kind of just marking right underneath that circled in probably about an eighth of an inch. I'm marking here around the edge so I know where to put glue on the hearts, right? Now I know where I can add my glue to. And then I'm just going to draw a little arc on both sides of the heart where I marked it. This side I'm choosing to glue the front on first. I wanted to see if it made a difference. I think I found it a little bit easier to glue the front on first because then the hearts are laying flat on the table. Whereas the other way, when I glued the back on and glued the hearts onto the back first, I had to sit and hold the hearts in the center of that circle first. This way I don't have to. <laughs> so, you know, be a little smarter than I was. I'm adding my Beacon Power Tack glue here to where I need it on the hearts. I'm placing that big centerpiece on front first. I'm going to let that set for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to flip it over once it's dry, and I'm going to add that beacon power tack glue here. And then I'll add my back wood circle here to cover up all this mess and make it look nice. And yes, Bella is helping me out. As soon as I noticed her playing with that needle, I poked it away. She has a thing that she reaches for my straight pins and my needles and I don't want her poking her eye out. Anyway, <laughs> that makes this project complete. So I hope you like all of these projects. Please leave me a comment down below and I know what you're thinking. I'm going to say, tell me which one was your favorite. And you can because it's tradition because I always say that. But what I really want to know is my thought is these three projects I think would be great for spring craft shows. And I actually have one more wood flower design I'm going to share in the next video. But would you 
buy any of these at a craft show? And if so, which one would you more tend to lean toward? Because that's the one I think I would make more of. Is that understandable? So let me know in the comments down below. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When conflict arises, we need to pay attention to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He may gently lead you to stand back for a moment to let the situation play out because possibly other players need to find their own resolve first with what they are facing. On the flip side, the Holy Spirit may push you immediately into that one step forward and face the conflict head on because you are the one needing the resolve. Understandably, as you hear this, you may be facing a conflict right now. Possibly it's a conflict within your job or it's a personal conflict between a friend or a family member. With either situation, the way you approach and handle the conflict is key, and as you face what is before you, there are a few things to consider. You must allow God to guide your intentions. Allow Him to position you into place so that you make the right move and not be on the offensive as you try to put the fragile pieces back together. Being on the offensive can only make the tension escalate. Allow God to guide your tongue during the conversation. Your tongue is a spark that can set a whole forest on fire and it accomplishes nothing but simply adding more hurt, more anger, and does not allow for resolve. You must carry yourself with God's grace and be willing to listen to all sides of the situation and definitely be slow to anger. In dealing with personal conflicts, it could be fair to say that your situation has probably been going on for months, years, even decades, and maybe now is the time to allow God to guide you into mending the hurt between everyone involved. It won't be easy, and it will be a difficult conversation that nobody wants to have. In fact, ignoring it probably makes it feel way easier, less intrusive, and definitely less hurtful. But in reality, if you've been praying and asking God to help you with what you are going through, I feel confident in mentioning that in this exact moment, God is speaking to your heart and saying, it's time to forgive the past, set your boundaries, and move forward to bring about this healing. God knows that the enemy has been strangling you with this conflict for far too long, and it's time to aim your slingshot. Let that rock fly and take down this giant so that the healing of this relationship can begin. It will take work and it won't happen overnight, but by forgiving the past and setting the boundaries that God wants you to set, your heart will hurt a lot less. Also remember that the other person or persons involved are having the same feelings of hurt and anger that you've been holding on to. So try to be considerate and understanding as you hear their concerns. Take a breath before you reply back and ask God exactly what you need to say and how you should say it so that your words and reply will be sensitive, gentle, and honest. Let God's love shine forth in your actions as he leads you to find your voice with everyone involved. And most importantly, be assured that no matter how everything may start out, in God's timing, this perfect resolution will present itself so that you can find the closure and the healing that you long for. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.